I'm here with Dr. Katrina Gamble, who is the CEO and founder of Sojourn Strategies. She is also a former professor of political science at Brown University. Uh, Dr. Gamble, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. And anyone who's been watching the national news is aware of a narrative that goes something like this. President Joe Biden has a problem with the black voters of this country. Um, can I ask you, um, do you think that's accurate? And if so, what do you think this problem comes from? Yes, so I think the biggest problem that folks are identifying and talking about right now with the black vote and the Biden's campaign is really about enthusiasm. You, we've been seeing the numbers where folks are sh showing the black vote potentially trending away from the Democratic Party. And I believe through some of our research and conversations we've been having with black voters that a lot of that is about folks really being tired of their votes being taken for granted. I think coming into this election, many voters, black voters are thinking about what are their options? What are their choices? Um, and those choices are not just Biden versus Trump. So for some folks, that choice may be whether or not they choose to show up or not show up um, in November. So I just saw the most recent poll from Bloomberg. Um, it was a swing state poll that found that Trump is expected to get somewhere between 14 and 30 percent of the black vote. Um, of course, in 2020, he got 8 percent of that vote. Um, that's a big difference. Um, were you so are you surprised by what that's showing? And do you think there may be something else going on besides um, apathy? Yes, I think that I, I'm I'm kind of surprised. I think we're still a ways out from the election. I think that as we get closer and folks are really honing in on what their options are, that number is likely to change. But I do think that what we're seeing is that many of the things that are important for black voters, people are saying they aren't feeling the impact of the policies that the Biden administration uh, is speaking about and talking about that they're championing. So it's not enough to say you passed something or that you took an action. Many black voters aren't feeling the impact of those policies in their pocketbooks. They're not seeing it in their neighborhoods. And so because of that, you know, if you if you keep doing the same thing over and over and and you feel like you're getting, you're not seeing a different result. I think it pushes people to pause and look at what the other options out there, obviously Trump potentially other candidates, or as I said before, choosing to total, disengage from the electoral process and look for other ways in which people think that they can make change themselves. Are there things that they can do themselves to try to help their own economic security or better their communities and their neighborhoods? And so I think that's a lot of what we're seeing is just um, deep apathy, not just, I actually don't think it's apathy. I think it's frustration. It's not that people don't want to participate. I think it's that they are frustrated with political institutions and politicians. And so they're weighing, weighing their options. Yeah. And so this past week we saw um, President Biden um, have his second campaign speech, uh, campaign appearance um, in South Carolina, in which he addressed the congregation of the AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, he came out um, swinging, uh, talking about the evils of racism, and um, I think um, addressing Nikki Haley's former faux pas by her not being willing to um, tie slavery to the causes of civil war, he made a point of saying, of course, slavery is was the um, impetus behind that war. Um, but a lot of the commentary since that has sort of been around um, the fact that this is sort of an old way of addressing the black community, right? Um, um, sort of similar to um, the 1958 midterm between um, Nixon and Kennedy, when um, Kennedy for the, was the 
I believe, first Democratic president to really get the black vote. Um, he did that through heavily addressing um, black congregations and, um, you know, going and supporting them. But a lot of the commentary says, you know, look, in 2024, that's not enough. Um, so if that's not enough, what do you think he should be doing beyond just talking about the evils of racism? What would you, if you were his campaign strategist, advise him to do? It's not, addressing having those types of events obviously are important, but the reality is what we're talking about and what we're seeing in the black community, this deep level of cynicism and just growing distrust, not just of the Biden campaign in particular, but of political institutions, it requires more than speeches. It requires more than TV ads. What we, through our conversations, like we, I was just in um, Ohio at the end of last year talking with black voters. And what they were telling me is that the, the people that they trust, the folks that they're listening to are their friends and their family, people in their communities. And so really to shift the tide about how black voters are seeing the Democratic Party uh, and the, the Biden campaign and whether or not they want to choose in the elections, the, the work there has to come from people that they trust, it has to come from tapping into folks' social networks, um, working with community organizations that already have deep relationships with those communities and telling the story of the impact and the plans of that campaign in ways that people really believe, people really can see how that is impacting them, right? You can't just say a policy pass. They need to understand how what happened, they, they can actually connect the dots on what happened and how that's like translated into um, their own lives, right? That they are able to um, afford to buy a house or they're feeling some relief from student loan debt themselves or their sister or someone that they know. And so I think it's gonna require more than um, events that is kind of speaking to, uh, which is a segment of the black electorate, what we, we found in our, our research called the legacy civil rights segment, but those are the black voters that are already going to show up they're the ones who are already pretty much solidly Democrat, but like the younger voters, the ones who are trying to figure it out, um, they're gonna need more different types of touches than events like what we saw in South Carolina this week.